Hello again, this is Christopher Dawes from IBM Forms, and today I want to take you through a new and improved Shred CSV application. Now, if you've seen the old one, um, the purpose of this application is to allow you to take your comma-separated values, parse them, and very quickly load them into a Forms Experience Builder application. I have in front of me here my Forms Experience Builder server, and I have the application deployed. And we're just going to open it up and take a look at how it works, and then uh, you will be able to use it yourself. So I've updated the content inside of this application, and you can see here I've got lots of instructions on how to use this application. And I'm going to go through each one of these steps with you so that it becomes very clear. The first step is that you have to create the table that will contain your parsed CSV data. Okay, the table already exists in this form here, and you can see that I have five rows. Now, in order to edit this table, you click on this table link here, and you can add the items as you need to. Now, in my case, I'm just working with some dummy data, so I have not given these any names. But in your case, you might want to give them the actual names of the content that you're putting in here. So if you have a name and a date and a score and you know so on and so forth. So you're going to want to give those some meaningful names. And then you'll see that it gets updated here in the, in the columns. Now, that's the first step, okay? This table needs to also mirror the form that you're importing the data into. Now, in the case of my example, I'm just gonna show you how to import data into a form that exists within the same application, but you could import the data into any FEV application that exists on this server. So here is the form that I'm going to be importing into and you can see here that it has five fields. And those five fields map directly to the fields that are in the table. Now, I haven't given them any meaningful names, but this is what we're importing into. So when I flip back to page one, so we've done the first step, right? We have our table that has our five columns that's going to hold the, the comma-separated values. Um, the, the second step is that I need to create a submit service that's going to map the table from the data to the form that we're updating. And again, I'm updating this form that is in this application. So let's have a look at the service. I go to settings, shred data. Here is the service that I created. It's this shred CSV looped, and it's going into the holder. So in your case, what you're probably going to do is you're going to come into the service configuration you're going to either, it's going to be in the current application, or maybe it's going to be in a different application. So you're going to select IBM Forms Experience Builder Applications as the service catalog. Once the service uh, has been updated, I can now type in the name of the application that I am looking for. And then I want to select the Submit Create Service for the form that I'm importing my data into. Then on the Input tab, I want to map all of the fields from the table to the repeated creation, which is going to create a row or a record for every row in the table. And then I'm going to map each of these fields Okay, so now we've created the service, the inputs, we're going to copy a row from the table, and we're going to create a record in our other application. On the output tab, I want to link the number of records to my records updated by service field. That's a field that's just going to help us make sure that we've uploaded all the records that we were intending to, to, to up, upload. I click OK. Now, in, th in this case, I, I have named this the SC underscore load data. We're going to need that ID later on, so just keep that in mind. Flip back to the forms. So we've created our table. We've created our service that's going to load the data into our other FEB application. 
the next thing that we need to do is we need to modify some global parameters okay the first global parameter is this map value and the map value is what allows us to associate each column of our comma separated data to the column of the table and so if we click on the properties of the shred data form and we click on the events tab and we go to the onload event we're going to find this map right here now i have five columns in my table so the size needs to be set to five and then for every column we need to have it written out in this fashion where you have zero the id of the field and type string now String is the only thing that's supported today, so don't change this value. I may look at modifying this even further, but for now, it doesn't have any impact. We don't need to have this set to anything else. So the only thing you need to change here is the size and then the ID of each of the fields that are in the table. Okay, so we've set up our map. The fourth step is to review this set of global variables right here. So the data field BO is the ID of the field where all of the CSV data is going to be pasted. And in this case, if you're using this application, then you don't need to change this parameter. The debug is a debug field that will show you messages as the code is running. And again, this is the ID of the debug field. If you had, say, tab delimited data or semicolon delimited data, you could change the separator. So instead of using a comma, you could use whatever separator it is that you want to use. Right now, this parses and processes in chunks of 100. So if you wanted to increase or decrease that, depending on the type of system that you're running on, you could modify that value here. The table BO is the ID of the table. The, here's the ID of the service that I mentioned earlier. So when you create your service to, to populate your other FEB application, you can either just call it SC underscore load data, or if you change the ID, then you're gonna need to change the ID here in this location. The, and then this ID is the ID of that field that holds the number of results that were updated with the service. These are, and, the, and this is something that you'll see in the, in, in the output. The rest of the JavaScript here, you do not need to modify. It, it's part of the, what makes this application work. The only section that you need to modify is the map and this block of parameters right here. So now that I've completed step four, I need to save and deploy my form. And then we can load the form. And in this case, I don't, I, I can actually just preview to, to see the functionality. So I have some test data and I'm going to process 817 rows of data. Now, what you'll notice as you uh, as you work with the app is you're going to see the debug field updated as the processing happens. So here we can see I found 817 rows, and it's going to update them 100 at a time. And so it's populating the table, executing the service, clearing the table, getting the next 100 rows, and proceeding until all the rows have been updated. And when it's done, it will actually report that the import is completed and it tells you exactly how many records were imported. Now, if you are importing data and at any point you see that the number of records that were imported do not match the number of records that you tried to import, then that should be a red flag and, and you're gonna wanna look and figure out which records were not updated. And it's possible that some, some of it was bad data, maybe the, the data was formatted incorrectly. If you get to that kind of a situation where you think you had a bad import and then you needed to correct some data, well, it's easily resolved. So if I flip back to my main page here, 
I can deploy my app, and when I deploy my app, I can actually click delete previous submissions, and that will delete all the submissions that had been submitted, which allows me to start from scratch again. But if I look at the view responses, we're going to see that in my holder form, there are there's all the data that I imported. Now, this page will not show you an exact count. Like there is an issue with this page where it doesn't really show you much more than than this number of pages. But if you export the data as a spreadsheet, you will see all 817 rows that were exported. So we know that the data is in fact in the database, even though this page is not showing all of them correctly. So that's that's it. That's how you use this new and improved Shred CSV application. And I know it's been getting a lot of use. If you do have questions or concerns, please feel free to post in the community. You can post on the page where you found this video, and I will be happy to address those. And this is an evolving utility, and I'm always open to, to feedback to make it better. So thank you for your time.